Welcome to the Jimmy Lloyd Songwriter Showcase. I'm your host, Jimmy Lloyd. We're here at the Gibson Guitar Showroom in Beverly Hills, spending some time with some local songwriters and getting to know the LA scene. On this episode, we'll be featuring two hard rockin' bands, one called Archer, the other called Gin. We'll also be spending some time with a terrific singer-songwriter named Chris Arena, so stay tuned. Here with Dylan Rosenberg, lead singer, songwriter, and resident guitar god for the band Archer. Uh, Dylan, it's wonderful to have you here today. Um, as I watch you play, I see shades of Ingve, of Jimi Hendrix, of Eddie Van Halen. Where did you learn to shred like this? Oh boy, I don't know, man. Uh, mostly just through the, the passion of that kind of music, man. I mean, I picked up the guitar when I was about 12, and by the time I was 14, I heard my first Ozzy record and never really looked back as far as that kind of stuff's concerned. Has it always been heavy metal that you've been drawn to? Um, first and foremost, yeah. Once I heard it, you know, that's always been the biggest passion genre-wise, although I do like a lot of other stuff. You know, I'm just, I'm just really into great guitarists, regardless of genre. Is it legal in California to have as much fun as I see you having when you're playing live? I hope so, because it, I don't want it to end. You know, it's definitely, to me, that's probably the most rewarding aspect of playing in the band. You know, I love sharing the experience with the fans, interacting. And speaking of playing live, uh, you've recently just come off tour with uh, Black Label Society in Europe. Uh, what was that experience like? Oh, it was tremendous, man, in many ways. I mean, the, the European metal community, the fan base over there is, uh, is really, really supportive, probably more so than the States. Um, and so the crowds were amazing and, and very receptive to the music. And then the other part of it was, you know, opening and sharing the stage um, for Zach Wilde, you know, who's been an idol of mine for many years anyway. So that was a true honor, to say the least. What did you learn from being so close to somebody like that and being on tour for so long? Boy, well, I mean, from somebody like that, you know, somebody that I've looked up to for as long as I have, you know, I'm always learning something from him because he's such a tremendous player. So, you know, guitar-wise, there's always stuff to learn, but that's what I love about the instrument, you know, is that the ceiling's never in sight. You always have something to gain and something to learn, you know. Um, but on the other side of things, you know, I got the opportunity to meet him and sit down and kind of learn more about the biz and stuff. And uh, it's cool, you know, each tour you go on, you just get more and more knowledge as far as how to conduct yourself and what the best way is to go about certain things and how to really, you know, be a pro on tour and do it for real. How big were some of the crowds you were playing to uh, in Europe? I believe they ranged from capacity of like 800 to about 2,000 was the last show in Rome. In Rome. And which city um, or location did you really enjoy the most? Uh, well, Rome was really cool because it was at this outdoor festival kind of setup. Um, Germany was really nice. Holland went well. The craziest crowd that we actually experienced was in Poland, believe it or not. In Poland? Yeah, I know. I didn't know that. But what's funny is when we were going in there, the Black Label Society guys were like, oh boy, Poland's coming up in a couple days. And then the next night, oh boy, Poland's tomorrow. And I was like, why are these guys getting so excited about Poland, you know? But sure enough, they were right, man. Those guys love their metal. You just came out of the studio with a new album recently, right? Yeah, yeah. We were just in the studio with uh, Gilby Clark, his producer, formerly of Guns N' Roses. And he um, cut in about two weeks down here in L.A. in his home studio and had a really cool experience, and I'm really excited to get the record out. You're pretty good at making friends with some really cool people. You know, it, it's def it definitely hasn't come overnight, though. You know, we've been playing a long time, and I'm just thankful to, to start, you know, getting more and more of a foot in the door and climbing the ladder piece by piece, you know. Do you consider yourself a gearhead? Or are you like really excited about like learning how the studio works? Um, it's funny you say that because I remember that just reminded me when I was growing up. You know, I was very adamant about not using a lot of special effects, no pedals, no frills. You know, I just wanted to like plug straight into this amp, show everybody what I got. You know, no alterations or any any effects. You know, now as I've grown older, I've realized that some of those things are actually pretty helpful, and it's it's not cheating or anything. You know, it's just a really cool effect, and so. Being in the studio again with people like Gilby, you know, they have all these tricks and these things at their disposal that, that you want to learn about, you know, and it's important because you want to gain knowledge in your craft and one aspect is recording your music so that people can buy it. What's the collaborative process like with the rest of the guys in the band? It's really good, man. It's really good. Sometimes, um, you know, rarely do I have an entire song manufactured front to back before the rest of the guys see it. Um, I prefer to, to bring in something that's at least a little bit unfinished, you know, and kind of get their input because I want, I don't want to rob the two other guys um, of the opportunity to kind of flex their creative muscles and kind of dig into a piece because I think the collaboration is what ends up, you know, um, producing the best stuff in the end. Yeah, you guys have got some good chemistry. What's one of your songs that really just kind of came together, like one, two, three? Um, on this new record, probably the last song. It's a song called War Waging, but um, 
War Waging. Yeah, War Waging. It's a happy song. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I had one riff led to another, and all of a sudden it was one of those things where I wrote it out in one night, basically. And then, you know, that's such a satisfying experience, you know, from you know being a songwriter and stuff. It was really cool to just come together. Sometimes it happens like that, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so we know what it's like when it works. What's it like when it doesn't work with the band? Yeah. Um, Fortunately, I think at this step in our careers, you know, and having not being the first time that we've ever done this, you know, we don't let it frustrate us too bad, you know. Although, you know, I admit that my personality is such where I really want to like nail everything down and like stay on it until it's finished. Um, but I've learned over the years that it just flat out doesn't always happen like that. And sometimes you have to like set it down, put it away, walk away, and come back to it later. You guys seem to be uh, friends first and bandmates second. I mean, I think you have to be. You know, I hope that's not a lost art. Where like guys get together and like take their paychecks and then they don't hang out on the side. Like, I don't see where the chemistry is in that, you know? Yeah, it seems like uh, you're, you're definitely in this for the long haul. Um, do you even have a plan B or are you just like damn the torpedoes? Yeah, no, 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 no plan B, man. I'm playing guitar. <laughs> What are some of the biggest challenges you, you face in the, in the industry today trying to make it? Uh, there's all kind of, oh boy, where do I even start? Um, I, for one, had to learn how to interact and, and kind of compete with the social media aspect of stuff. You know, I mean, back in the day, I can only imagine how much simpler it was because you didn't promote yourself on the internet, you didn't have computers, you didn't have phones, the camera, you know, all this stuff. And Yeah, you don't get points for not knowing stuff either. Yeah, no, and if you get left out or if you, if you want to be ignorant about it or you neglect it on purpose, you know, it's not going to help promote your band and you have to adapt, you know, so that's one aspect that I've really had to focus in on and force myself to kind of get into it. Does the band have any like kind of pre-show rituals that you tend to do over and over before a big show? I mean, now, you know, after doing this many shows, we're kind of casual, we kind of understand the routine, you know. I remember earlier in our formative years, we would, uh, we would play the same song every time to get pumped up, you know, like on a CD player or something right before we hit the stage. What song was that? It was a song called Die Young by Black Sabbath with Ronnie James Dio on vocals, the late, great Ronnie. you consider yourself an optimist? I do. Yeah, I do. No, that's Some of these song titles, I don't no, know. No, no, no. No, that song's not even, that song's not even real heavy and dark, believe it or not. But no, it, that song's like the three minute flash in a pan, high energy, bam, like get y'all excited song. Gets y'all pumped up for your show. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have something like that. You know, or it could be like if you're listening to like, uh, you know, Welcome to the Jungle or something, same kind of thing. So there must have been some crazy stuff that happened on a tour with Black Label Society. Uh, any great road stories? Uh, plenty, plenty, man. You got six young guys driving all over the continent in a van, so there were definitely some good things. I mean, our first show was in Holland, and uh, I'm not gonna go into all the details, but... Uh, there was a, one of our roadies um, ended up having a bit of a romance with a Dutch woman that we met that night. It's pretty cool. Was she of age, I hope? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're definitely of age. How old was she? <laughs> Probably in her 40s, I'd say. You know, this is a 25 year old guy we brought out from California. It was some cougar action going there. Oh, it was, it was awesome. It was hysterical, man. And she had a lot of stay at her house. You know? Can't we beat have, that. We didn't have a place to sleep. She fed us in the morning. It was awesome. Yeah, it, uh, Dutch hospitality. That's right, that's right. Is there anything about Archer that uh, you'd consider a secret or, you know, that would surprise uh, your audience? Um, well, you know, we talked earlier about, like, how good a chemistry we have the band members, which is absolutely true. Um, but you reminded me of when we, we auditioned our bass player that we have now, maybe two, two and a half years ago, David. And uh, I remember he came into the studio, and for some reason I just, I couldn't get over the fact that he had really short hair. Because all the guys in the band had long hair. Is that know? a problem? Well, you know, it shouldn't be, and it's not, you know, but unfortunately in this industry... Nothing wrong with short hair? No, no, there's nothing wrong with short hair, except that we're in the rock and roll industry and everybody's got to look cool too, you know? It's not my decision, you know, if I had it my way, everybody would just judge us by the music and the music only, but that's not the way it works. So we came in and I was like, man, I don't know if I got the right look here, you know? Great player, but all this stuff. Thankfully, you know, his, his musicality and, and his personality prevailed, you know? But I remember thinking back, like, I don't know if this guy's going to work out. Now I look really stupid because the guy's a fantastic bass player and a great friend, and here we are making a killer record. So the moral of that story is you just cannot judge a book by its cover. There you go, the age-old adage. Well, you guys make some wonderful music. I wish you all the best. Uh, it's really been great getting to know you, and uh, wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Jimmy. Glad to be here.